Ever wonder about life in the ancient seas? Well, in this episode, we will follow this fossil towards a giant marine reptile and hear the story of the remarkable person who discovered it. We're going to the Jurassic Coast. Hi, I'm Lydia, and this is the Walk of the Dead. It looks like a shell from a marine creature. I think it's a fossil, and I wonder what other marine creatures this animal might have interacted with. Hey, Ethan, can you tell me more about this rock? Thank you, Lydia, for introducing this rock to everybody. Now, this is a rock, but inside, it has a real fossil shell from a marine creature. She was right. Lydia also wondered what other marine creatures this fossil might have interacted with. And believe me, we will answer that question for sure. This fossil is called an ammonite. Ammonite. Do you see that beautiful spiral-shaped shell? The animal itself lived inside the shell, sticking out its head kind of like a mini octopus or a squid. They lived in the warm, shallow seas from about 450 to 65 million years ago until they finally went extinct. Now, let's put this ammonite on our rock spinner, and I want to just imagine being one of the first people to ever find these ammonites and wonder what they were. That is the work of a paleontologist, someone who wonders about the story of fossils. I have a paleontologist friend who can tell us the tale of this ammonite the story of other marine creatures it lived with, and tell us about the remarkable person who helped pave the way for paleontology hundreds of years ago. Angina, how are you? Hi, Ethan. It's lovely to meet you. Wonderful. Likewise, everybody, I'm with Angina Katwa. Angina is a visiting research scientist at the Open University here in the United Kingdom, and she's also a science communicator and expert in, well, this stuff out here. Angina, where have you taken us today? I'm so excited to bring you here today. We're on the UNESCO designated World Heritage Site called the Jurassic Coast. Jurassic Coast? Is that kind of like Jurassic Park? It is, but it's even more exciting oh, than good. Jurassic Park <laughs> because the rocks here record 200 million years of Earth's history and what makes them really special are marine reptiles. Marine reptiles, reptiles, fossils from the ancient oceans. Can you tell us the story of when this area and these fossils were first discovered and really studied? I can, but there's somewhere I really want to take you first. So let's go. All right, let's do it. Ethan, this is what I wanted to show you. I'm ex so excited oh. to, for you to meet this very famous lady. And who is this? This is Mary Anning, and she was a Victorian paleontologist who lived here in Lyme Regis. As a child, Mary and her brother would be walking along these beaches looking for fossils to sell uh, on the streets of Lyme Regis because Mary grew up in a working class household. She was actually quite poor. All along the Jurassic Coast right here. And it looks like she's got one in her hand. What's that fossil right there? This spiral shaped shell is called an ammonite. Huh. So just a kid finding fossils, selling the fossils to make money for the family. But she went on to be a, a really notable paleontologist. What were some of her big discoveries that she made? Well, Mary was finding all sorts of incredible things on the beaches of Lyme Regis, skulls of ichthyosaurs, but perhaps her most famous find is the full skeleton of a plesiosaur that's currently at the Natural History Museum in London. A plesiosaur, that's like, a, uh, like an underwater dinosaur or like a whale with a long neck, right? Uh, not quite. You have to kind of imagine the Loch Ness Monster and then you're close. The Loch Ness Monster here in Lyme Regis. So I love this statue, how she's looking out into the oceans beyond and down below everybody, you can see all these little fossils that the statue maker has put in there. But when did they put the statue in? Well, the statue only was constructed and put in only a year ago, and that was a result of a campaign led by a 12-year-old girl called Evie Swire. Evie was doing a school project in Lyme Regis, and when she asked her mother where the statue of Mary Anning was, there was no statue no to be statue. seen. And so she started this huge campaign called Mary Anning Rocks, 
and she raised a lot of money and now we have the statue in Lyme Regis here today for everyone to see. So Mary Anning did her work here about 200 years ago studying these 200 million year old fossils and it wasn't until last year that she was really fully recognized. And it was particularly hard for Mary Anning because she came from a working class background and men at the time, particularly wealthy men, they kept themselves in these rooms talking about all the wonders of science and people like Mary weren't allowed in. I'm wondering, Angina, if we can find some ammonites ourselves on this walk. Can you take us down there? Fingers crossed we find something for you today, Ethan. Let's right. go take a look. I want to find them. Let's go. So what I wanted to show you was some of the most famous rocks on the Jurassic coast. It's these ones. Oh my goodness, Angina. I can see why you brought us here. You guys, this is the Jurassic coast. It's incredible, isn't it? Because you can walk along these beaches and walk in the shadows of her footsteps and find fossils even today. Wow, it's hard not to be inspired when you come to a place like this. And I'm wondering, Angina, what was it that inspired you to become a geoscientist when you were growing up? Well, when I was 12 years old, I had an opportunity to go to Kenya uh, with my family, Ooh. which is where they're from. Wow. And I was taken to see this ancient lava flow. And as I was walking across these jagged black rocks, my imagination just went wild. I wondered where the rocks had come from and I questioned what it told me about the earth. And that made me want to study geoscience. Geology always starts with an amazing experience like that, whether it's in your back garden or whether it's on an incredible place like this, but it all starts with the rock. All I'm right, sure let's go see something. what we can find. There we are. Ooh, there's one right there. Yeah. Okay. You see it right there. Let's remove all of it. Let's move this big block out of the way. Hey, Ethan, come and check this out. Look What'd what you I find? found. Let me see. Well, I was just having a look in the gravel on the beach here, and I came across these two beautiful oh, pyrotized ammonites. Oh my goodness. So oh my goodness. You hold a bit of Jurassic history. Oh my god, so these are 200 million year old ammonites. Look at this little guy. Can you guys see that at home? That's incredible. And these are a little bit bigger. Uh, they look kind of golden. Is that pyrite? Yes, it is. It's iron pyrite. He's otherwise known as fool's gold. Yes. So don't go and sell it and make a million. Oh, we won't. <laughs> we learned about that in episode three, you guys. But so this is a, an ammonite that turned to fool's gold, that turned to pyrite. Yeah, look still, at that. Still something. Oh my goodness. So we're just gonna grind. Look at our treasures. Look at that. All right, you guys, let's take a look at what we've collected today at the beaches at Lyme Regis. Mostly what we found are ammonites, these teeny tiny golden ammonites. These are pretty little ones we found today, but you've been here before and you found some larger ammonites too, right? Yeah, this is the one I'm most proud of. Check oh, this one out. wow. Isn't that beautiful? You guys, look at this thing. That's huge. I know, and it tells us all about what life was like in these seas. Amazing. Now, you've also told us that there's more than just ammonites on these beaches. This is also a story of marine reptiles, and I was so lucky a couple of years ago to find this. Ooh, what do you is, think that is? Is that a part of the backbone? Yeah, it's a vertebrae from an ichthyosaur, and this ichthyosaur was probably about one years old, so just a baby. A baby ichthyosaur, marine reptile. Angela, this has been awesome. There's one more thing you wanted to show us, so why don't we go take a look now? It's incredible we're standing on a 200 million year old ancient Jurassic seabed. And I can tell because look at these giants. These are ammonites, right? They are. Let's take a closer look. Oh my goodness. You can see this spiral shaped shell in the rock and this is the ancient body of this creature. And these are almost a foot and a half wide and this is about as big as they get in this part of the Jurassic coast, It is. Right? They are quite big though, aren't they? They are enormous. So Angina, it's been such a treat having you here as our guide through the story of Mary Anning and all the fossils and ancient marine life on the Jurassic Coast. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Ethan. It's great having you on Every Rock Has a Story. We'll see you guys back in the studio. Wow, you guys, that was so much fun to visit Lyme Regis with Angina. This is the stuff that we collected while we were out there. It's beautiful, but clearly the coolest one is this one the ammonite that Angina collected herself, and she let us borrow it here for this episode. So, Let's welcome Lydia back to our studio. Hi, Lydia, how are you? 
Um, I want to ask you, now that you've seen where that rock actually came from, tell me, what did you think of the story? I think it's super cool that Angelina found this rock herself and that she let you borrow it for the show. That's great. I just great. love these, like, fossils. So I was going to ask I want to be a paleontologist when I grow up. You do? That's so cool. So why do you want to be a paleontologist? I just love dinosaurs so much and other creatures, and I know so much about them. Um, I decided I want to be I want to be a paleontologist um, when I was in preschool, and it's never changed since. Wow. So Lydia, I'm curious. Had you ever heard of Mary Anning before? Yep. Okay. So if Mary were here today, what questions would you want to ask her? Probably, I want to ask her. Like, uh, what her first discovery was, what got her so interested in finding the fossils, and probably what her favorite discovery was. Yeah, well, Lydia, obviously I've never met Mary Anning myself, but I guarantee if she were here, she would be so excited and proud to meet you and to know that you were hoping to be a paleontologist as well. Lydia, thanks so much for joining us on this episode of Every Rock Has a Story. Everybody, the stories of life are written into the rocks of those Jurassic cliffs, and it's a story that's still being written today. Our relationship with the Earth continues to evolve in so many ways. In this episode, we saw that people can make a difference in science, and you don't have to be a fancy old English guy with a beard and a pipe to do it. We heard the story of Mary Anning who was just a girl when she began to wonder about the fossils along the coast where she lived. We heard of Evie Swire, who wondered why there was no monument to Mary Anning and campaigned herself to create the statue that now commemorates Mary's remarkable life. And we met Angie Nakatwa, our scientific tour guide at the Jurassic Coast, who was first inspired by walking over lava rocks in Kenya and wondering what could have formed them. I want to thank them all and I want to thank Lydia, who got this episode started with her observations, her questions, and her ideas. People can make a difference. You can make a difference. All you need to do is ask and wonder, what is the story? And the rest will follow. We'll see you guys next time. Foot and a half wide. This is about as big as they get. Oh, hello, Pooch. How are you? This is about as big as they get. Should we start that one again? Yeah, I think. So it looks like it's like a little bit of like a hammock. Like it would be like a little underwater hammock with the little with the little thing to inside. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you can even find stuff like this. This is what I call a late Holocene or even Anthropocene fossil. It's a piece of metal left by humans, the life of today. Oh dear. I need to give it a sniff and a squeeze. A sniff and a squeeze. I well, it smells like a rock, but I have a guess where you're going with this. What well, have you given me? It's actually a coprolite from an ichthyosaur. A coprolite. And what exactly is a coprolite, Angina? It's fossil food.